everybody. Momentum Monday, here we are. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. How are you doing today? I'm good. How about you? <laughs> Great. Hi, everybody. Um, we'd love to see your comments. Let us know you're, you know, where you're at. Uh, you're not zooming in, you're YouTubing in. So I have to right. think you're kind of YouTubing in. <laughs> um, so the topic, this is uh, what, episode 12, right, Lisa? Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Oh boy, it's uh, it's really moving along here. And uh, I corrected my camera so you guys can see that I'm working in acrylic today to begin with. But um, just so you know, this painting may well uh, transition into oil and color wax. You just never know. <laughs> um, <laughs> And the, the topic of today is that I'm starting on some new panels. These are 36 by 36 inches each. There's three and I stuck them really close together. That's a choice, like you don't have to do that. But when I'm in play mode, I kind of like to just get the feeling as if they're one, one piece, you know? And then uh, they can either stay together as a triptych, which uh, is a possibility, but um, I'm kind of doing these in preparation for a show that's about a year from now. And I just realized that I need to constantly have new things on my wall. And uh, I just finished my lexicon series and there are eight paintings. I finished those over the weekend. And I'd given myself this um, goal of finishing them by July 10th. And today I think is what, the 10th? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about that guys? Sometimes when you set a goal and you're like, in the, it's in the back of your mind. So today what I'm gonna do, um, I love the palette so much on the Lexicon series. I also loved the shapes I was using because uh, as, as we talked on one of the previous episode 10, the spokes and sparks, which now a lot of us in Art Success Masters are uh, thinking about more in terms of well, what we're gonna do next year. And it helps us to sort of say yes, no, yes, no to the different things we try in our studio and the things we say yes to have legs. So, I think that the idea of lexicon for me, which is typography, it can relate to just any kind of writing with letters, including, you know, um, my mother's Japanese. So if I were to start to look into Japanese characters, that would be a whole nother like world and the work would look a little different, but I would do a series. So today's thing is to scale up. And I wanted to just show you some of the tools. First of all, any questions about anything in the past or current or if so, in chat, please uh, ask a question now. Now's a good time before we get started. Um, but when you scale up, and, and really, honestly, 36 by 36 is mid-range. It's not really scaling up per se, but if you're used to working six by six, it's a major scale up. So it just depends on what you're used to. And when you put all panels together, now you're talking about you know nine feet wide, but it's three feet tall. So nine by three, if you were to look at that as one piece, now that would be considered, you know, more scaling up. So it depends on how you look at it. But when you scale up, you need uh, you need larger quantities of paint, and your tools have to scale up. So when I'm working 12 by 12, this guy is great, right? My little painter's edge. But when you scale up, guess what? They get bigger. Wow, and, that's big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'd have to stand back so you can see the whole thing here. But, yeah. And, so that's fun, and uh, I have a mega compass because I love circles. So of course, if I love circles, I better have a tool that can make some gigantic circles. Oh wow, yeah, I don't have one that big. I know this. Now, see that it has a nice sharp point here, and mm -hmm. I think what I would do is I probably want to stabilize this on the board and actually score with a point. It's normally meant to make a mark, but I would use this to actually gouge into the surface. Ooh. That would be one way to do it. Yeah, um, that would be fun. Yeah, and then of course tools, uh, I, I, you know, I show this all the time, but just, just the easiest thing of all is to extend your tool on a dowel rod. And that just gives you less control for those people who tend to be kind of like, you know, they have a hard time letting go. When yeah. you work up larger, it's really nice to feel that looseness, you've got more space. And if you've never done it before, uh, the tendency is to kind of tighten up because you're not used to that much space. Maybe it's the first time you've tried it. So I, I'm just saying if it's more the first time you're trying, but you're not used to it. Give yourself like a little bit of a break by extending your tools and taking away control so that you don't even have the opportunity to be controlled. So I have these tools and then I also have like, um, 
just to be prepared. (laughs) 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 And (laughs) whoa. Yeah, so um, these are other tools, and this one already had white on it, and I put gray on my panels last night, so I decided that white, um, I, if I had to choose between painting on white versus gray, I do like gray. It's a mid-tone. It's a very mid-tone gray, and I, I'm going to start out working with black and white, so I will have all three value ranges on there, and then uh, I, I think the paint will dry really quickly. And then I'm going to move into color. And my palette is, is very much the same as the Lexicon series. So, uh, so what I what I did was I got out my paints to make sure I had enough, number one, to even do it in the same color range. And then I checked my oils to make sure that I had, if I transition into oils, do I have these colors? Some I have to mix, like the aqua and the yellow green. You know, they don't come just like the acrylic. Uh, hue, but I can mix them. So as long as you know that, that's why color mixing, you know, becomes really, really valuable. I did not know that oil did not have the aqua color. It's, there are many, many like aqua colors, like phthalo turquoise can be made into an aqua or, you know, the blue and the green can be made into an aqua. But the point is you kind of have to mix it to match the acrylic version. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Because the aqua I have in acrylic is actually not, um, let's see. That one is not straight from the company. That one had to be blended. So uh-huh. some colors that I, that I used in the lexicon thing um, were uh, as they are, as they come from Nova Colors, and some are not. So this is the finished series, So and these are the colors. And before when I was showing them to you, these are not like, they don't have the final core stiff varnish on them, but you can kind of see the color range. And so these are about shape and color and the distressed surface. Cause I love old walls. And so um, these just really helped me to get all those, you know, like in this particular series, that's what I focused on. I, I uh, definitely had these limitations, right? Um, in shape and color, number one. And if you, if you make those two decisions about shape and color, as far as like, well, I, I'm inspired by this type of shape and you know, typography is a pretty symbolic shape. And then color, well, then across your entire series, you know, you're going to have cohesion. So cohesion is a choice. It's a choice you make. Um, but my in my studio, like, I'm not always after cohesion in the play stage. Sometimes I just want to discover something new. And if you continue to just follow the same thing, same palette, same shapes, you can do that as long as you're excited by it, you know. But in my case, like, the reason I shoot out, I send out so many different spokes is because... I get bored really easily. I want to discover new things. So there's that. Okay. Now, while, while I have you guys here, I just want to point out we do have still till the end of July is this uh, Rex Art Frames. And Lisa, yeah. if you want to show that little coupon. Okay. I'll show you again. I just, because I know not everybody's on the same calls, but mm, two deaths of frame. Um, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths. So almost one and a half inches almost two inches. That gives you an option, right? These will be less expensive, the shallow ones, and those are great. I want a little bit deeper, more, you know, uh, feels a little different. Um, And these come in packs, and you can see that their panels fit perfectly because they make the panels too. And they make panels that are eighth inch or quarter inch, and they fit just the same in this guy. These frames are balsa wood, very lightweight, and they can be painted, varnished, just cold wax medium to seal it in, whatever you want. But see how nice the presentation is. And uh, here's the back side. And they're all made in the USA. Uh, great company, great customer service. So just wanted to throw that in there. Yes, they're wonderful. Okay, now. Um, okay, so. Essentially, I'm just going to start painting. <laughs> Let's see. We did have one question, um, and I think I lost it. Oh, there it is. She wanted to know where where can I find your base for oils? Is it the same as acrylic? And then cafeteria with blue sheets, I don't understand. Um, okay, do you know well, what you're cafeteria, yeah, I'll, I'll take it easy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, cafeteria is <laughs> great. Uh, wet, wet blue shop towels on um, underneath tracing paper or parchment paper. Some people have used freezer paper. I think you can probably 
get away with quite a few different types of paper, but I like tracing paper because, and you have to make sure that your flu shop towel is not too sopping wet. So I hold it like this over the sink until it's only like one drip, one drip, one drip. If it's sopping wet, your tracing paper will actually um, fall apart a lot faster. And I keep reusing the same blue shop towels again and again and again, unless they get paint on them and then, you know, they don't uh, absorb the water very well. As far as the base for <clears throat> full wax and oil, I mean, I just gesso the panel and um, I will be, uh, I'm, I'm thinking I probably will transition into oil and cold wax on this one. So my base is an, an acrylic underpainting, but it doesn't have to be. It's just my choice. So there are a lot of ways you can start in oil and cold wax painting. You can start out with, uh, um, even if you do oil and cold wax, you can just add a little bit of that, you know, Gamzol, which is the odorless mineral spirit to your oils and just put like a really thin wash because that's super lean. And that won't be a problem when you then transition into the oil and cold wax. Any other questions? Let's see. Diana asked about, I think the frame she says is the wood balsa. Yes, it's basswood. I think they call it basswood. Bass? I think it's basswood, right? Bass. bass. Yeah, bass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basswood. Mm -hmm. Is that the All same right. as balsa? I mean, I don't think so. I think basswood is heavier weight. Yeah, I think balsa. so too, because balsa is yeah. super, super soft. So, yeah, yeah basswood is heavy, is a harder wood. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, I have all kinds of things that I can begin with. Um, and I, I'm, I, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, good. Um, so I'm just getting a, like, sometimes the first things I do are just to get a feeling of, like, what, I can't even close my eyes. I'm just trying to get a feeling for, like, how, how big is this thing that I'm working on today? And I don't even have to really look at what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just really, like, what do I have here? How do I feel about this amount of space? And because it's a physical, this is, like, physical exercise, you guys. <laughs> So I'm setting up some horizontal lines here and vertical, you know, um, just exploring like that. And, you know, these are such early stages, it just doesn't even matter what you do. So just let go, have fun. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is just take one of these long handled guys and chip brush, really inexpensive from a hardware store. And I've taped it with, you know, uh, green tape. And I'm just going to start off, I've got black here, I've also got white. And I'm going to hold it at the end of the handle here, right? Because it defeats the purpose by held it up here. Then it's just a chip brush. So the idea is that you hold it kind of at the end and just let it go. So now, and I know it, uh, knowing that I love a sense of geometry, I'm kind of starting with the opposite, right? I love curve linear as well, but my lexicon series has a lot of, um, Hard edges, um, there's a bit of rectilinear going on there. And so I can I can I can go between like this more rectilinear feel and then go loop like this and turn that into a curve. And at the same time, I can experiment with like how does how does size feel um, on this scale? Like what's considered small, right? Like that's pretty small here. So even now, like when I'm playing. And a child will do this. If they're exploring. What does it feel like to do? You know, they'll take their fingers and just do this, right? They'll do that. Now, that's that's pretty small. Now, that's what a child would do. Um, so they're, they're, they're getting a feeling of small. But then, if you take this, you know, they might be like, oh, now I want to try something really big. And I'm just like... I want to get a feel for like what does that feel like? And I love I love the, the thick bold mark versus the scratchy rough thing. I love that contrast. Um, I can go like this. Solid, solid, like this is a big solid shape. I don't have that already. So that thing about like what, what don't I have? Well, I don't have a really solid shape. And I give it maybe some loops like this. Now I am aware where the divisions are, but I'm not really paying attention to that. So now what don't I have? Well, I don't have a, I don't have like a really thick shape 
and I love circles, so this makes sense for me to uh, rough this in. It's a very uh, loose and rough. Uh, I'm going to say that it, here it's crossing over. Now these these things, when I go over the edge like that, they they serve. If this is going to stay cryptic, if I wanted it to, um, let me change this camera. A bit. Do you want me to put on the other one? Well, you can do, uh, you know, probably. Oh, I see. It was yeah. lower. Yeah. Let me see if I can change it just a hair so you can see the whole thing. Well, it may well. not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little better, I think. Yeah. Okay. And I, I can switch to the other one occasionally too. So. Sure, that's probably a good idea. Okay, so um, yeah, I like things that go off the edge. Um, it, it feels like I wasn't trying to make, it's like, you know when you draw a figure and, and, and you miscalculate and then you, you, the, you got the shoulders up here and you're like, oh shoot, I need a head. So then your head's like, you, you try to fit the head in there and the shoulders are like way up here. And you're like, yeah. But when, when you just let that figure like, these are the shoulders, so there is no head. Just let it go. You don't need the head. <laughs> <laughs> don't need the head. <laughs> okay. This is this is curved, but then it goes right to linear. So that's a variation on a circle. And I do love circles. So um, and I was thinking how, you know, um, and we did this whole thing with circle trying to square. That's fun, you know. So all these things that you do can help inform what you do when you go large. And let's see, I've got a circle. So I'm going to just do a triangle here, going off the edge. And um, I like I like patterns, so maybe there's kind of a, a zigzag going on there. And I'm not going to do like a whole lot, you know, here. Um, I'm, I'm really exploring my brush here. And see, this is repetition with, you know, some of these circles go larger and people are saying they're hearing a bit of an echo or distortion I wonder if I need to remove one yeah well you know sound guys um, I am working on my camera is facing the wall so and my my speaker my microphone is like midway it could be coming from my mic yeah might just have to put up with it today. Yeah. I'll remove the other camera for a second and see if it makes a difference. Okay. Does everybody still hear Pam? Say something, Pam. Okay, testing, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> How about, was that better? I don't know, is that better, everybody? Okay, how is that? Any better? Well, nobody's commented yet. I figure it takes a minute. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that could take time. Okay, so um, the idea here was just to get something started, and I'm going to cap my, the black paint for now. And I just use, I found these yogurt containers uh, really do store the paint very well. Amazing, like I could keep this uh, fresh for a week or two weeks, and it's all about the seal. So just make sure you save your caps and make sure they're the right caps for the right uh, containers. And then I've got I've got black on this brush. So I think what I'll do, because um, I like to, you know, not have to wet my brush too much. And I should be using a slot board here. Um, I could do that, but since I don't have it right in front of me, I'm just gonna get most of that paint off here with my paper towel like that. So it doesn't have to be perfect because as soon as I put this into the white, um, although, should I do that? I'll just get it a little bit wet and get, get most of that black out of it. And then that works. I don't want to contaminate my white too much. How's the echo? Is it any better? Or? Um, you know, some people are hearing it and some people aren't. So I'm not sure why. Um, Elaine says she thinks it might just be the distance of the mic. So 
Um, and Marit says she can hear you all the way from Norway. No problem. <laughs> well, well, that's my, that's the ultimate test. I mean, that's right. <laughs> if you can hear me in uh, Norway, you guys, then I think everything's pretty good. <laughs> notice, uh, notice how I've got this, this girl, lots of mid-tone gray, and then the black really stands out, right? And um, I, I want to go over the black with the white, but it's not dry yet. So in the meantime, I'm just going to like fool around. And if it crosses the black, <clears throat> of course, that's fine too. But I'm just going to continue to play and see what I get. Sometimes the gray will match the background pretty well. And I, I'm always like, you know, in, in, as you do this, you're making comparisons. Is it lighter or darker than what's behind it? You know? Things like that, and uh, just just loving shape, and like don't be afraid to go over wet paint. It, it just doesn't matter at this point. It's it's all fun, and variety is the spice of life. Not just in life, but in art. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so here I've got some really thick, juicy paint, and I, I can just leave that be. And, Now, again, this, this horizontal thing doesn't have to just be in, in black and white, or, or I should say in black. I can continue on this feeling of the horizontal. And if I really wanted just white, I'd have to let this paint dry. But <clears throat> I'm not going to do that now. I can, <clears throat> I can just um, be sure to <laughs> try and avoid some of these lines that I made with black. Or I have another idea, an even better idea. So what I can do is take some of my this guy, right? Oh yes, this is fun. This there's all these like ways if you're impatient like I am to um, like not wait for paint to dry. <laughs> yeah. I put it on the floor and we're gonna make sure that this paint's really like hopefully white. I need a lot of it because. Oh, I wish we could see what you're doing. I guess you'll hold it up though, right? Yeah, I'll hold it up and it'll drip. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that'll make it more fun. Right. Everybody loves drips. Okay, so, yeah, so here's, all I did was like a line. Okay, you guys can see that it's pretty thick and juicy. Yeah. So I'm just going to like put it here. Add some white and... That's pretty good white. Ooh. Still some paint left on there. So maybe I'll in here. Now I I grabbed whoops, kind of that a bit of that bigger shape here. And uh, repetition come over here. Pick up paint from the other side. There's now this new circle here. And pick up here. You can slide the paper, see what, what kind of interesting effects you get. Oh, Different yeah. Kind of work. <laughs> Asked about one of the previous okay. um, things that you talked about in one of the previous videos. Yeah. A sand cloth paper layer first or tears? Um, okay. Uh, recent discussion was to sand the collage paper layer first. Yes. You're right. Okay. So basically, if I had collage paper on here, um, and then what I'd want to do is, if I have any intention of sanding it, because you, you may or may not, but if you do, 
do that before you put the glass medium on top because once you put the glass medium on top, you've now sealed in all the beautiful things on your paper. And if you then let that dry and then sand it, what happens is the sanding takes off the, the gloss medium, which is attached to the print, colors and letters and you know images, and it tends to rip off that top layer of your collage paper. So then you don't have the whole reason you put it there in the first place. Whereas if you sand it first, like I can show you on this one, um, if I, this is a piece of collage paper down here, right? So if I, if I had uh, put gloss medium over this first and then sanded it, a lot of the color in this beautiful collage paper would have been ripped off and it would go white. So I sanded it first and then I look at the gloss medium as a, um, a sealer. It now has sealed in what I really want. What I really wanted was the textured distressed paper. I don't want huge pieces torn off of this because it'll be too high contrast and I'll lose the color, I'll lose the words, I'll lose all the delicate nuances of that collage paper. So does that answer your question? I okay. bet it does. <laughs> all right, so um, I do need to let this dry a little bit. So Lisa, you might want to turn my volume off. Like you can just turn my volume off for um, my the, where I'm talking because that's the main camera. Okay. Oh, you're going to blow dry? Okay. Yeah, just a little bit so I can move the color. Okay. I had you muted. You won't, you won't. I'll text you. Text me? Yeah. Hmm. No, I didn't see your question, Jennifer. I will look for it. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Okay, let's see here. I will turn back on your mic again. I that uh, rather than drawing this, this is a similar situation to like, let's say this is oil and cold wax and I'm like really impatient and I just don't want this thing. I don't want to wait till it dries. Um, you know, the way that I move a painting forward, like, it's like, I don't want, I don't, like, I want to maintain some of the integrity of the original marks, the blacks, the whites, the grays. And, you know, if I just go in with a wet brush and the paint's wet, I'll get like this mishmash of everything, you know, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. That's what my slot boards look like. Like I'll show you these two guys here. You use mostly Nova color, don't you? Yeah, I do. I like Nova colors because they uh, are liquid. They, they go into these little bottles like this, and they come though, I'll warn you guys, they come in, um, like like this is a Nova Color bucket, a gallon, and I don't like to work out of buckets, so I then have to transfer this guy into a gallon container, and I use a funnel, okay, a big mouth funnel, and that way, because I don't, I just don't like having to open these buckets, then it's hard to seal the bucket, and it's just such a wide, like, surface area, while it's open, your paint is starting to dry, you know, if you really forgot to put the lid on, which I did last night. So having a gallon jug to me is way easier. And once you have your gallon jugs, then you can easily transport those into this size, which is even easier. So I just want to say that, um, like, these slap boards were done with leftover paint and um they're like usually the paint was dry before i added more paint to it so this is kind of the effect you get when you don't get a, a lot of mishmash right it's not all merged together it's, and and these are all the same colors of my lexicon series so guess what these are going to become part of the same series 
And that's why having a slot board handy is great. And I'll have to start one for this. But but if you don't want to wait till the paint dries, um, then all you have to do is use like more of this stuff. And I can point this camera down. Let me, let me see if I can try this here. Um, this will be my side cam without the sound. So let me add. Oh, the other one back in. Okay. Um, Jennifer asked a question too. What is the best base for collage? She's used white gesso, but is polymer medium superior because it would prevent the wood from affecting the collage materials? Mm, I think I'd always start out with gesso um, just because, let me think, let me think what Golden told me. Um, they actually, okay, no, that's, it, okay, in a perfect world, Golden says to put down two coats of gloss medium first to stop the surface induced um, discoloration, the SID thing and then go into to gesso. So once you've got the two layers of polymer medium, I would say you could go right into collage if you wanted to. Um, but I, I usually would put the white gesso down so that it's kind of more of a, you can see the collage paper better, but I think that's a choice that you wouldn't have to say, um, let me see if you can see this here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna lay a lot of these down. Can you see this, Lisa? Yes, yes I've got it spotlit. Okay. Now, this stuff comes in different sizes. Um, here's the wider. Down there against the wall is where I put my slot boards so they catch all the drips. <laughs> that is such a great idea, Lisa. Um, I, I'll, I'll I switch have? it. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Figuring out these cameras is always fun. Yeah, definitely. Okay, here. So here's my longest one. I'm sure it even comes longer than this, but the advantage is that you can put, you know, larger shapes. So um, basically, I'm. <clears throat> And somebody's asking, you don't water your paint down. You just use a large uh, funnel, right? Yeah, that's correct. Because I don't want to water down the whole thing, you know. Right. I'm just going to use up this paint here. It's on this brush. Let's see that it matches the gray behind it. And then I'm going to stick this in a bucket so that it doesn't dry out. And just let it sit there. Okay, now I've got these sheets of paper on the floor, and I'm not gonna mix paint right now. I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna throw it on there. So I've got this aqua color, it's part of my palette, and uh, I can 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 does it show? Um let me do that, yeah. Okay. Um actually that is a bit off camera. Okay. Better? Uh, yes. Uh huh. Somebody asked about where you purchase Nova and you get those online, right? Yep. NovaColors.com. Yep. It was on and the does the gloss medium do the same thing as sizing the paper or board? Uh, and something about with a proof prepared size. I don't really understand for sure. I'm not sure I understand that question. You might yeah. Have to yeah. Can you restate your question, Vicki, so we understand a bit better? And I thought I saw another question. I'm looking for it. Oh, uh, Denise asked about how your panels are affixed to the wall. You have screws in the wall and they're yeah. just hanging on that, right? Yep, that's all. Now, okay. I put this paint on the paper kind of thick, you know, and uh, it can stay thick or, you know, I can smooth it out or whatever, but um, then you can just move it around and see, even when it goes over wet, wet dish paint, the cool thing is that uh, it doesn't, it still maintains its integrity. It doesn't disturb the paint underneath it, even if it's wet. Right. 
super fun. So then you've got this guy, right? And it's still full of paint, so like I'm not going to waste that. Plus, I have actually saved these pieces of paper and collage them in later, so that's really fun. areas of the strong paper like I don't want this identical pattern of aqua um, to be uh -oh. on the painting so you just choose like where to focus on pressing the paper yeah. and I can also like lift some of this guy like right here just this little area peel it off and move it now it's turning to letter Q um, go here right and you can just go on and on with this kind of thing. Um, this shape is very, like, you know, very, you, when you see it, you know it. Here's that shape here. So yeah. I can come over here and just make sure it doesn't look identical. Because that would just be boring. Right. <laughs> um, come down here. So I'm, I'm looking for kind of this um, pattern distribution of the color. And, you know, like I, I can see that I'm missing maybe some. And this is just craft paper and the aqua is a mix, correct? That did not come straight from Nova Color. You know, you have to mix your own aqua and you can make it any, any way you want. You can make it lighter, darker, you know, it's all up to you. Yeah. And you did not re-wet the paper for the next use, right? You just keep on pressing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, what I'm doing is using this paper is kind of like, uh, I don't know, like as if it were my hand and then finger painting. Yeah. <laughs> look yeah. how cool this sheet is. Like, I'm going to save this because it's really fun. Yeah. Now, shadow printing, you know, the shadows just get better and better and better each time, don't they? Yeah, they do. And see how I was able to, without waiting for this thing to dry, because I'm really impatient. I was able then to um, move into another color and I can do the same thing like with the next color, which will be, I, I got my cool, so I'm going to go warm. And um, since you guys have seen me with the, the stuff on the uh, floor, maybe I'll move this camera up again. So it's okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. Because that's probably more interesting. I don't know. Um, the other thing you can do, though, is like you can um, just do this. Like I'm doing a line right now, right? Right, yeah. That's why I like squeeze bottles because they're just so much fun. Um, Terry says that Peggy mentioned that Nova color paints are very pigmented and wondered if you know that how they compare to golden. Well, I know they're professional grade. Um, hard question for me to know the answer to that. I would actually call the company and ask them because they're probably pretty aware of what their competition's doing. Oh, yeah, good idea. I personally yeah. use golden and know that they are super pigmented. Yeah. So now, guys, instead of putting the paint onto uh, this paper directly, they're doing it onto the panel, and, and you can kind of see how much it's dripping. I mean, it, it does have it does have a bit of drip to it, but not not that much. So, like, if I wanted to, I can take my airbrush medium and I can selectively choose some areas where maybe I want this to run a bit, and it might run, it might not. I didn't like I didn't mix it. If I mixed it, it would be more pronounced. But anyways. Um, so, like this is dripping here. So I'm going to take a piece of this at a, at a time. Like I, I, I took that, right? So there's only part of it here. And I'm going to like totally move it to the other part of the painting and flip it. And, um,
We're going to diagonal. Now this is just like, like you know, working large is, um, it's more physical, but great thing for Monday morning because I'm getting my exercise and um, everything that you're doing, you're moving your arms more, you're having to bend over more. It's not like you're on the table where everything is so easy. I actually get a good workout. So this is also Monday morning workout for me, guys. I hope it is for you guys too, if you do it. major cross-pollination and I, I it really helps me to think of metaphors um, when I paint and I'm just thinking like I'm a bee in the garden and you know bees interested in pollinating all these different flowers and it's picking up pollen from one flower and taking it to another one and then going across to the neighbor's yard and putting it on their plants and so that's all I'm doing here is that can you see how even now it's cohesive it's yeah now it's chaotic but I'm not gonna like say it's ugly because I actually really like a lot of what's happening. For me though, I, I need complex colors. And right now these are like the child version of colors that I love. Now some are already blended. They're not pure. The aqua is not pure. And the yellow orange is not pure. They've already been mixed a little bit. But where I wanna go is my lexicon series, like there's almost no pure color maybe except for the uh, cadmium red dark because um, that is, uh, it's a bit of a, it's, a, it's already desaturated, number one. So it's, you know, the difference between like these highly saturated colors, the aqua and the orange or yellow orange, uh, they just have a different feeling than where I want to go. Doesn't mean I can't really enjoy this stage, and I am. I mean, I'm really having a good time. So I hope you guys have a good time too if you try this. Okay, so this paper is had a, a good life <laughs> and it becomes part of my collage paper bin Ooh, now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now what color um, I'm becoming part of my painting too. And so I've got green, I've got this uh, beautiful green yellow. This is a Nova color. It, uh, they make this color. It's number 120. Very vibrant. Now, I might want to do something different with this one. Like, I don't want to have all the same stuff going on every time I monoprint. This is monoprinting, by the way. So uh, maybe what I'll do is, hmm. Can you see that? Oh, no, you switched the camera, didn't you? Okay. So, you notice how I put these guys on different thicknesses and lengths, although they're kind of close. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but this beautiful green, like I love the green, and I'm just going to let that sit there for a while and stick that over the aqua here, see how it goes. Yeah, see, that's pretty pure. Like, it didn't really mix. <laughs> Slam it on. <laughs> well, I got that from Willa. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, you taught me so much, you guys. If you have any grandchild you can watch or hire <laughs> from your studio, I highly recommend it. So much fun. I've learned more from her in the last, like, you know, couple years. Um, I've been watching her very carefully and. I, you know, it's really great when you're this old and you can watch somebody like, it's almost like you're living your childhood again, because most of us forget what it's like to be a child. Yeah, I got in trouble for painting on the walls when I was a kid, so I'm glad to be able to do it like this. <laughs> yeah, so did Willa. She, she uh, painted on her wall with pink marker and we left it there. It's like, oh. yeah, I really like it. <laughs> oh. Parents were not happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. 
Um, but in grandparents' house, it's fine, right? Yeah. Karen wants to know if you ever have a problem with your squeeze bottle tips clogging. Yeah, I do. I stick a bamboo skewer down the top and that usually does it. Or worst case scenario, I will cut this, the top off like a uh, quarter of an inch. And so then it's a bigger hole, but at least I've gotten rid of it. So show of hands, how many people can do what I'm doing? Everybody can do this. Everybody, yes. Yeah. I mean, if you can't do this, you need to come to my studio. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you can have a canvas outside on your lawn and if you have fun. Um, so I love this green. Like, it's just it's so beautiful. Like, green is kind of my favorite color. So, um, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to commit to any color dominance at this point. So I'm really just going for an even, all over, polyky sort of start here. And where did I put my green? Let's see. Probably like white in front of me. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the, the biggest thing with these guys is like when you lose the cap and then you're like, oh no, where'd my cap go? Um, that's why they, they have these bottles that have um, the twist tops, but I don't like those as well. Um, I don't know where my cap went, but I'll have to figure that out. Um, I'll just do some little things like this. We have lots of hands waving in agreement. Oh, good. Yeah, you guys can do this. I mean, <laughs> and that's great because. This is where all of your ideas, like this is the part where you're not you're not saying, oh, it's gotta be this, it's gotta be that. You don't know what it's gonna be. And that's when your creativity is like, oh really? This doesn't have to be anything. I can be anything I want. That's really great. And then your I think your painting just responds to you and it's so happy. Now here I can draw this down, see what happens. It's like see what happens, you know. Renee mentioned that if you uh, don't keep the cap on it, if I'm understanding correctly, that you stick a nail in it and that will wow. help keep from clogging too. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> I'm sure it's here somewhere. And I think what I will do, yeah, I could stick something in there like a um, bamboo skewer. Yeah. Let's see, what do I have right now? I, I can't remember where you were standing when you grabbed that green. I'm not sure if it was under the camera yeah maybe well i have lots of bamboo skewers here so for now anyways i'll stick it in there until i find it and i'm sure i can replay the video <laughs> yeah just see where the <laughs> lid went <laughs> yeah that's pretty pathetic when you have to replay a video to find out where your cat went <laughs> i can think of better uses for my time right <laughs> yeah paint right right it's so okay. fun by the way Okay, now great, thanks. Um, how are we going on time? Okay, great. We asked until, yeah. Any questions, anybody? Let's see, um, I've been trying to catch them. Anybody else have any more questions? Elsa loves the randomness, mm -hmm. which is fun. Thank you, Elsa. Yeah, and Renee loves the colors. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Kathy says that she uses sewing pins that have the round tip on the end for the bottles too. Yes. Yeah, that's a great idea too. It is. Um, if anyone knows if you can buy just caps for bottles, because are they universal or not sure? Gosh. Well, you know, 
they would probably be different sizes for different bottles, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I'm um, thinking so. Yeah. I'm covering up my white and I know you can it. get extra tube lids from Golden for their tubes of paint, but I don't know about the square hmm. bottles. Surely. Good. Maxine said the green gave it life. Yep. Tamara yes. says she's writing. She can do anything she wants all over her series. Nice. Oh, Peggy says, yes, you can buy just caps at Walmart. Ooh. Well, we don't have a Walmart in Hamilton, but we do. Well, have a you can probably get them online because I buy things from uh, Walmart online occasionally. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, I'm sure I will find it. <laughs> Are you for it? <laughs> it's okay. it, did you put it in your pocket of your apron? That would have been a smart idea. I'll have to go to that next time. Maybe it's even like in my glove. I see my gloves off, but now I can feel it in there. Okay, that's okay. Um, I'm going to go into red now. Let's see here. Because so I need, I love my red. And like these, these areas where I just applied it and it's really thick. Um, I found that that's actually really cool when you stand back. And so... What I could even do is, um, yeah, maybe I'll take one down at a time here. You can, now you can see. The other thing I want to tell you that I, I did, um, well, first of all, uh, I take these panels off, and I'll be rotating them all throughout the process. They don't stay in one position. This board can go over there, be rotated, and every time you do that, you see it in a different way. And um, what I want to say is that you know how that blue tape is, like, really annoying? So I decided to paint my blue tape with white gesso, so I don't have to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And I didn't think of that. That really made me happy. Boy, just not seeing that blue tape because you don't want to finish a painting just because you want to take the blue tape off. That's not really fair. <laughs> oh, hey, Jen Bolton just said restaurant supply stores also sell the caps. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. And Kimberly said uh, she loves your freedom and your ideas. And are you going to be painting on this series over the next few weeks? Well, I will be uh, painting every day on these probably. Like I, I, I need to move the work forward. So my idea is that I will continue to work on these and I'll be recording. But um, like the, the Monday show snapshots of what's happening. But the next time on Monday, you might see this quite advanced and um, it will be hopefully quite much further along and who knows, maybe even finish. You just never know how quickly things happen. Um, so this camera can point down at the floor. Let me see here. Okay, let me switch. And Rose asked about these panels being a larger version of the Lexicon series. Yeah, it could be, but I'm not oh, committing to that. Wait, sorry, I had it. I need to add it to stream. There we go. No worries. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we're both trying it. Okay, you go ahead. Okay, so. let me make it solo. There you go. So now you can kind of see. I oh. did put some red on there. Yeah. Uh, the red may be kind of hard to see until I hit it with my brown paper, but let me just do one first. And, and you are using the same colors, correct? Same as the Lexicon series now. Now I did, I did consider like once I, I want to really push this color uh, palette because I love it. Um, but that's a lot of colors. Like this is one, two, three, four, five colors. And the most I usually would use is three because I, I feel like beyond that it's craziness. And, but because I was able to make it work and what it really, really is is like two sets of compliments that got these. Blue and orange, I've got the red and the green, and then there's one more color. Um, well, the orange actually is like a yellow orange, so there's kind of three com complements. There's all three complements. There's purple and yellow of the yellow orange, and then there's aqua and blue, uh, aqua and, um, which is like the blue, and the orange from the yellow orange. So there's kind of like three complements, which is really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, Okay. Um, talk, talk about a challenge, and that's kind of what it is. So here's that beautiful red. You see, I love that red. Oh, wait a minute. I just switched it. Let me get it back. Takes me a second. So there far. you are. 
so hard today. She's going to need a really big lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor girl. Lots, of, lots of switching around today. Good thing I slept good last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys give her a big round of applause, by the way, because she really does work hard for these <laughs> Well, and Pam, we've had a couple people ask about composition. Uh, one yeah. person is in PDPC and having trouble with clarifying. So the composition okay. is pleasing and would love a class on composition. And that's well, something that you teach us more in the pro group, right? Well, it's actually part of the Art Success Masters, and yes. that's a higher level course. So PDPC gives you the intro to color design, but if you want way more than PDPC, PDPC is like, um, it became a subset of a much larger course when I realized uh, several years later that there were some things I could add to PDPC that weren't there the first time around. So I created Art Success Masters, which is like five times the size. And I do cover um, eight abstract compositions and, and even in the last two years, like I, I realized that I, I have introduced, you know, these art success masters students to eight different abstract compositions. Of course, there's a million others. But what I feel about it is that they're great if you're like really struggling, right? They give you kind of a lifeline, but they're also, um, I don't want to say a crutch, but they kind of are. Um, they're kind of like tried and true things like do this and it's going to work. I'm much more in my own studio, um, like if I do a grid, I don't want it to be too obvious usually as a grid, like it's, it's kind of hard to not be too obvious with a grid because it's, it's uh, but the point is that um, you really want to uh, learn these compositions, sure, but then create your own, like find it and then break rules. I mean, it's all about right. learning the basics, that's what PDPC is all about, but then ASM you want to go deeper into all these things in PDPC and then really like start breaking out of, uh, you know, like a comfort zone, which can lead to all kinds of interesting new things, which you just can't get if you're like, if you get too attached to a composition, you do it again and again and again, it never gives you the opportunity to explore and find your own. So it's a bit of a crutch, nothing wrong with that, especially when you're kind of just like, want something that works, you want to understand why it's working. Um, that would be helpful, but again, that's Art Success Masters is where, and we're launching that in August. So if you guys are interested, check out my website. The price will go up pretty soon, but if you're a pro member, you get um, a significant discount if you're, well, if you're referred by a pro member. Let's just put it that way. Okay. And so um, you sent an email out to uh, pro members just yesterday with info to uh, you put on a list for this, right? Yeah. For this new three stages process. I've got that uh, banner at the bottom. Jan's asking, how do we contact Pam concerning sending someone to take your class? And she thought uh, about the, she saw a discount and she got that right. email yesterday, right? Yeah. Now the My Three Stages guys, that's for PDPC. Just so you know, oh. that's my, my okay. first class. I did it in 2018 and it's a great class. I've got like over, over a thousand people who've taken it and great results. That's all about working a series with four different palettes. You'll have 16 paintings by the, done, by the time you're done with that course and feel really good about color and design, but it's just like getting your foot wet. And then ASM is the course we made in 2021, which is five times larger, launching in the um, fall. Um, we have over 700 members in there, um, 12 large master classes, and that's where we dive into abstract composition. So you're not gonna find composition of PDPC. Um, so how do they, I'm sorry, how do they contact you to find out about getting into masters? Well, it's on my website. So artandsuccess.com, go to courses, it's right there, all the description. It, it currently says the price is going to go up though. Um, but like I said, if you're a pro member, that's why I gave you that link uh, to say that you are, if you want to refer your friends, you're going to get a huge discount or you get like 60% right. off. So, it's exactly. really great to be referred by a pro member, and that's why I'm urging my pro members to share the, the yes. video when it's done. It's not done yet. But um, anyways, yeah, so there's that. And that was in last night's email, so they should yes. look at that email. Yes. And you can, Lisa, if you give them my support email, then, okay. then yeah, that's always good. Yes. If anybody wants to email Pam about the master's course, here is her email. And... 
Um, if you're already in Art and Success Pro, look at yesterday's email. There is a specific link. And of course, you can always email her too. But if you've already got that link, go for it. Okay, so I started to add the red, and you can see how that adds yet another dimension. Um, it's this cadmium red is it's just really beautiful and adds kind of more uh, depth to the piece. I mean, I'm going back and forth between warm and cool. You can kind of see how uh, it doesn't have a dominance yet. There's like half warm, half cool. But now when I put this painting back, you'll see how I don't have to put it back in the same orientation. I can now change it. And it can really change how we feel about everything because now uh, I start with some very um, like dominant vertical strokes, but now they're horizontal. And, and then when you look at this and you say, well, okay, when you stand back, how does that change everything? How's everything working together? This makes me now want to add more like horizontals to this one, or maybe what I'll do is like with this guy and rotate it. So that, yeah, that red sure made such a difference, didn't it? Yeah, and now you can see the screws on my wall. They're just screws, and they're into plywood. The plywood's about half inch plywood. The other side of my studio has three levels of screws so that I can really like move them up or down, but this is my wall for bigger work. So it's really good just to keep moving these things around, and don't get too, like, this is way too early for me to be thinking triptych or diptych or anything like that. Like, I just don't want to be thinking about that. I just want to move them all forward. And um, yeah, so this would be my process of keep rotating the panels and put the right panel in the middle and the middle on the left and the left on the right. And, you know, just like mash it up a lot. So, yeah. So um, Terry had a question for you to clarify about launching ASM. She said she paid for it months ago and then took PDPC and then instead, and now she's restarting ASM, but thought it was self-guided and at your own pace. It is. Um, so ASM, it's a big, big course, right? It's kind of college level. So the way it is, is like it was created to be, um, if you're like an independent type person and, and you don't, you know, you like to do things at your own pace, you can certainly do that. However, if you like community and you like to kind of, Share ideas, um, then you can add to that your pro membership. The pro membership is meant to um, complement the Art Success Master's course for those people who like more community and have a fabulous community, but it's optional, right? You don't have to have the pro community. Now, if you are in the pro community and you're an Art Success Master's, we're all starting together in the fall, going through Master Class 1 and then Master Class 2. Some people will go a little faster, some will go a little slower, it's all fine. Um, there's, it's always like, all of my courses are go at your own pace and they're all lifetime access. So they're not just like one year's access or two years or two months. I've seen things that like for a, a month access or even two weeks or three days and it's like, I don't get it because um, I mean, I don't learn that way. I need, I need to have access to this again and again. So anyways, yeah, any other questions? Yeah, wonderful questions. And again, the RexArt uh, frame yep. link and um, coupon code is there. Thank you, Lisa. And yeah, that's helpful to have. Awesome. Well, I, I want you guys to uh, definitely try this. Uh, it doesn't have to be large scale. You know, you, the, the method's the same. Like, I, these are slot boards right now. <laughs> But yeah. um, they're bigger slot boards, and to me, I'm excited by them. Uh, and next time you see them, if you if you only see them on Momentum Mondays, these will be quite different the next time you see them. But for those who are in my pro membership, uh, my many stages that these paintings go through will end up in my Watch and Grow library. So anyways, yeah, check out artsuccess.com because it's a school, and there's a ton of stuff in there. So, okay. Is that it? I think we're good, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate seeing you. Please subscribe to my channel and, and tell your friends about it because uh, that's how these things, the algorithm um, doesn't share my videos unless uh, you guys tell other people about it. And yeah, YouTube is kind of keep changing their mind. But um, yeah, but I want to thank you guys for being here. Um, I love just chatting with you and getting your feedback and comments. So thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Yes. And also, I just noticed there was a question about the master's class. Kimberly asked, if you're not already in pro or PDPC or anything, 
Kimberly, email Pam at this email address and ask her about it. That way she can get the information to you. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, if you guys get in, like if you're not in pro and you're not in PDPC, the, the course is really just coming right now. It's going to go up like any day now. So if I were you, I would get in there now and just take a look. It's artandsuccess.com slash ASM. And um, it's like $500 off what it's going to be in like by the end of the week. So if you want to grab it at a big discount, um, now would be the time. Uh, it'll, the price will go up depending on when my um, IT person can <laughs> change it. So um, yeah, that, that was all I can tell you is that uh, we're going to launch in the fall. So the price is not, um, it's lower now. If you get it when it's lower, great, go for it. But um, it's going to go higher pretty soon. Okay. Is that link correct? Did I just put that on correctly or is it? Yes, need to be? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, that'll uh, tell you everything that's in there. Um, it's got tons and tons of, uh, you know, well, 12 master classes and, and it focuses on basically four things. You and, and why it is that your own life is so critical to your art. So it makes, gives you all of these ways to connect your art to your life. And then another big section, um, Five master classes are devoted to really diving into the design elements one at a time. And because they are our alphabet and um, you need to really get to know each one, kind of like almost like a person. And then we go into creating a series. That's why the PDPC course like meshes with that portion of ASM because it's a portion of it, you know, but um, it goes much deeper than PDPC, so you create a series, um, four paintings, six paintings, 12 paintings, whatever you want. And then we all celebrate together. We're going to have a graduation uh, this fall for all of our members who have completed one through 12, because it's a big deal. And then yeah. they're going to start all over again, but at a higher level. So That's right. We're excited. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. Um, hope you enjoy your Monday, and uh, we'll see you next Monday. Bye. Bye.